pretty straight there. Be interesting to see the numbers here. So you can see a club path of 4.2 degrees in to out. Okay, so I was able to change that path number quite nicely because of the depth. You can see my face to path is minus 3.0 degrees, which means my face was slightly closed. And my spin axis, like we spoke about before, has now tilted this way, moving the ball a little bit more right to left. Welcome now. to the channel, guys. My name's Ryan Moke, and today I want to talk to you about a term called depth. Now, depth is often used in the coaching world to distinguish someone who has too little amount of depth or someone who has too much depth and how that relates to the ball flight they're hitting, whether it be a slice or a hook or a draw or a fade. Let's get stuck in. Welcome back guys, and this one's going to be a very, very simple explanation of why a player might be slicing the ball or why a player may be overdrawing the golf ball. Now I'm going to talk about two different types of depth, one being not enough and one being too much. I've got my TrackMan set up, I've got my iPad set up, and I'm going to hit two shots for you to show you what kind of depth that you use in the backswing and how it can influence the numbers being a face and path relationship to get that curvature on the ball, whether it's a left to right or a right to left. So if we were to start with someone who is a slicer of the golf ball, typically we would see a lack of depth in the backswing and an open club face. And what that might look like from, from this line here or from this view here, would be simply a club face that looks a bit too much toe up and a depth or a, a, a lack of turn where when their arms are at the, at the top of the swing or the club is at the top of the swing, you're going to notice the butt of the club. If we draw a straight line down, you're going to notice that on the toe line or even a fraction outside the toe line. So if we were to mix a club face and a lack of depth for a slicer, it makes it a lot easier for that player to come down, club face outside the hands, uh, the club face is open, and then what happens is they kind of, they swipe across the ball, and that's where you get that left to right shot. So if I was to hit a shot right now, like I said, I've got TrackMan there, I've got my iPad here, club path would be a negative number, and the, the, the face to path would be a positive number, just, just via the lack of depth that this player might have. So normal grip, normal ball position, but I'm going to have what I'd call a lack of depth in my backswing. So little body rotation and the arms a little bit too up and away. Now there's a prime example of someone with too little depth in their swing. And as I'm looking at the numbers here, I can see my club path is minus 2.1 and my face to path is 4.7. So basically what we're saying is the path of the golf club is moving out to in and the face is open. And that's what puts that spin on the ball. You can see the spin axis, if you're familiar with these terminologies, spin axis of 11.5. And that's to that's spinning left to right, or it's it's the it's the tilt of of the ball this way. So if you're a slicer and you want to try and draw the ball, we would want the tilt to be more that way. So that's a fairly easy way for those overdrawer players to hit a slice or to, to hit a fade. You would take out the depth in your golf swing. It's pretty simple, right? Now, if you were a slicer and you wanted to try and draw the golf ball we would do the opposite. So now we're going to increase the amount of depth, both in our body and our arms. So what I would be doing here is I would be trying to feel like I'm turning my body a lot more, and the club would work a little more inside and maybe more around me. And what we can now see is my arms are more across my body, as opposed to the non-depth player. Arms are across my body more, and the butt of the club if I was to draw a straight line, would be on my heel line, okay? We can get this a bit too much inside, and if we do, we, we do start to struggle with low point issues, start to hit behind the ball, so just be careful. There is a, an ideal amount of depth, and there, there is too much depth as well. So 
Obviously, this, this is dependent on player to player. So let's play a shot where I'm trying to now move the ball from right to left, so more of a draw. And I'm looking for that club path to be more on the positive, so a non-negative number, and a face to path to be a negative number on this one. Okay, and that spin axis will actually be a negative number as well. So all I'm trying to do is I'm trying to feel like my club face perhaps is pointing a little more at the ground in this, in this uh, position of the golf swing here. And I'm definitely trying to increase the amount of rotation my body's getting and thus will get my lead arm and the club more behind me. So I'm going to have a shot here trying to hit this one a little right to left. Pretty straight there, be interesting to see the numbers here. So you can see a club path of 4.2 degrees in to out. Okay, so I was able to change that path number quite nicely because of the depth. You can see my face to path is minus 3.0 degrees, which means my face was slightly closed. And my spin axis, like we spoke about before, has now tilted this way moving the ball a little bit more right to left. Now, I did get that one out of the heel a fraction. Gear effect would, would straighten that up for me. But you can see how much I can change my club path. That was a six degree club path change just by feeling more turn in my body and getting my arms a bit more behind me as opposed to someone who doesn't have a lot of body rotation and just lifts those arms up that's going to make it a lot easier to come from uh, outside to in and cut across the ball. Whereas the player moving this, this club more in, in the backswing, is going to, it's going to make it a lot easier to get this club to move more in to out in the downswing. So that was fairly easy to change my path and face and it was all through the amount of depth that I had in my backswing. Now, one of the things to really notice is this will change player to player, okay? Some players need less depth. Some players need more depth. Some players need a club face change. Some players need, you know, way more depth than they think. It is individual, but what I would recommend you do is play around with turning the body a lot, seeing what happens to the ball flight, don't turn your body at all and see what happens to that club and ball flight. Just play around. And what you'll notice is, obviously if you've got something behind you like a launch monitor that tracks club path and club face, you'll be able to see the numbers change quite dramatically from swing to swing. Guys, I hope you all enjoyed that. If you did, please press the like and subscribe button. If you wanna comment, please comment below. Ask me any questions, even if it's related to your own swing. Let me know of any more videos you want me to film. Until next time, thanks for watching.